if you are a member of a gang and you're committing a crime in my community, I am going to make sure that you are held responsible to the full extent of the law. That has brought ire. People are angry about that. And as a result, they, there have been threats. It's just part of the job. Um, people also seem to think that in society that there are certain people that are immune from prosecution. If you are a celebrity, if you are a high-ranking public official, I guess that there is something strange with me. Lady Justice is actually blind. Um, this is the reality. In a rare exclusive interview with NBC News, Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis says that she believes no one is immune from prosecution. A grand jury in her investigation into election interference by the Trump campaign in Georgia subpoenaed sitting Republican Senator Lindsey Graham yesterday, along with a number of other close Trump associates. She has said a subpoena for Donald Trump himself is a possibility as well. Now the Fulton County investigation is heating up. What does it mean for the January 6th committee's investigation and Attorney General Merrick Garland's federal investigation into the attempted coup? Tanya Miller is a former Fulton County assistant district attorney and a former federal prosecutor. She's currently running unopposed for the Georgia State House. And Asha Rangappa is a former FBI special agent and an attorney and senior lecturer at Yale University. And both join me now. Great to have you both. Um, Tanya, let me start with you because you worked in this office. and I don't know if you worked for Ms. Willis or not, but I have to say... Um, she is serious as a heart attack here. Like, I, I, I think there's part of me that's thought this is a enormous shot to take, right? Like, if you were to indict the president or his associates, it would be the, the most notable criminal indictment in American history. And to yeah. do it as the DA of, you know, any county, not Fulton County, but anywhere, even if you were the Manhattan prosecutor, it would be a huge thing. But she really seems like she's pretty serious about this. Yeah. Well, I will tell you this. I, I know Fonnie Willis very well. Uh, I did not work for her. I worked with her in the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. We were both uh, homicide prosecutors in the major case division. Um, I was there for eight years. She was there for probably about five years uh, more than me. But listen, Fonnie Willis is a prosecutor's prosecutor. Um, she is 90% prosecutor and probably about 10% a uh, politician. She is a newly mm. elected uh, district attorney, and I think she views this case the way most prosecutors view it. She is looking at the facts. She is looking at the evidence. She is going after it. And the question is whether or not the facts support a charge. And I think that's her focus. So I think anybody who thinks that Fonnie Willis is playing around with this special purpose grand jury absolutely does not understand Fonnie Willis, does not understand the tradition of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, and doesn't understand Fulton County jurors. That's, I think that's well said, Asha. Um, obviously, um, the the subpoenas are, you know, uh, as she said, I thought that was a very funny quote, like, yeah, no one wants to come talk to a prosecutor. That's why we have the power of the state to compel it. Um, you've got Lindsey Graham saying this, Asha, uh, this is all politics. Fulton County is engaged in a fishing expedition, working in concert with the January 6th committee in Washington. Any information from an interview or deposition with Senator Graham would immediately be shared with the January 6th committee. I don't even know what he means there, but does he have legal grounds to object to this? Well, Chris, I'm really not sure what his legal theory is in resisting that subpoena, but I'll, I'll say something with regard to the relationship between uh, a potential Georgia prosecution and DOJ, which is that Georgia is a separate sovereign. Um, Attorney Willis, I think is right when she says, what does she have to gain from this? And I think DOJ has other considerations because they are a part of the same sovereign. Merrick Garland is under a Democratic president and potentially contemplating prosecuting a person who has an intention to be an opposing candidate for the president he works for. So he has many considerations that Fonnie Willis doesn't. And I think that a Georgia prosecution could potentially shape and narrow the charges that Merrick Garland decides to bring because he wants to bring something that, especially if Georgia is picking up the baton on, say, election fraud, charges that the federal government is uniquely positioned to prosecute with regard to Trump and the attempted coup. Let me just follow up on that, because it's an interesting point, and it's one I've been trying to get my head around, and then I'm going to come back to you, Tanya. So, you know, there, there's the law, right? And then there's 
institutional considerations, political considerations. And it's not like you can just completely blot those out if you're going to prosecute an ex-president of the United States. And I think my thinking has always been, should a prosecution happen, whether it's, you know, if it's justified by the facts and the law, it's going to, if it's going to happen from anywhere, it's going to happen from DOJ because, like, that's the sort of pinnacle of state power, right? And what you're saying is that in an institutional sense, it's actually less conflicted for the Fulton County DA who says, hey, you came into my jurisdiction and tried to overturn an election, then it would be for Merrick Garland. Is that what you're saying? Then it would be for Merrick Garland. Th that's exactly what I'm saying, Chris. You know, the president is a singularly unique defendant. And Merrick Garland, just the reality yes. is that he has to take into account, especially, as you just mentioned, the institutional considerations in terms of the public's faith in the Justice Department's impartiality has to be right. reinforced, not weakened by any prosecution. And I think that in this regard, I've been thinking about this a lot, that that there's a, a crime, 18 U.S.C. 2383, incitement to insurrection, which would really be the charge that I think Merrick Garland would be right in bringing for three reasons. First, it creates a bright line. If you send an armed lunatic mob to attack a co-equal branch of government, that is wrong. Everybody knows that. Merrick Garland, Sean Hannity, they all texted right. him that day. Second, the public can get their minds around it. It's exactly what yes. they saw unfolding on television. It's not something that was happening behind the scenes and, you know, uh, crazy legal theory. And third, and this is really important, Chris, incitement to insurrection carries as a penalty in addition to jail time a prohibition from running for, from holding public office. And I think mm. most people don't realize that being charged huh. with a crime or even going to jail actually doesn't qualify, disqualify Trump from running that or holding office. And so if the clear and present danger is him being president again, that should be a consideration well, that Merrick Garland should take into account. Uh, that's a great point. I was uh, I was in living in Providence, Rhode Island, I believe, when the mayor, uh, uh, Buddy Cianci, ran uh, to be reelected, I think, from jail or just out of jail, might have been in jail. So it's, it's a thing that's happened in America. And Tanya, to your point about, you know, I mean, you're basically saying, look, this is a serious office with serious people, and Fannie Willis is a very serious person. Like, when you think about the institutional considerations, and when you think about just the resources, right? I mean, again, the most difficult prosecution, the most high-profile prosecution in American history, literally, is yeah. it a, is it, what do you think about that office doing that? Well, listen, I, I think, I, I'm a resident of Fulton County. I, I practice in Fulton County now as a criminal defense lawyer and a civil rights lawyer. Um, it's not a small thing for us here, but, but listen, what I think, uh, this office is very skilled at doing is understanding why and how it is important to make sure that we take very strong stances on, on things that affect our communities in big ways. This is the same office, and by the way, the same prosecutor that uh, tried one of the biggest cases in Fulton County history, a RICO case against Atlantic, Atlanta public school teachers um, about test cheating that was alleged to have been widespread. So this is not a person who is unaccustomed to taking on big giant cases, eating the elephant kind of one bite at a time. And really this case, when you think about it, although the president is a very big potential target, the actual facts of the case and what he did and the potential charges are not all that complex. Uh, we yes. had him on tape. And the question is, what does that tape mean? What, what is what he said on that? on that take mean and what do all these other circumstances surrounding it mean? Does it rise to the level of a crime in Georgia? And I don't think that's all that complicated uh, a mission for a prosecutor like Bonnie Willis to undertake. Yeah, and I should just be clear here as we're talking about this in a theoretical sense. Like, I am not, I'm not a lawyer and I'm also not in the prosecutor's team, like looking at the evidence to, to, to establish whether there's a, you know, whether in fact there's a prosecutable crime. I'm not around the table when that decision's made. I mean, it certainly seems to me as a layman from the outside, there's a lot of crime going on. Uh, and, but but we'll, we'll see if those decisions get made uh, by these very capable people who I, I have to say, uh, Fannie Will is very impressive in that interview. Uh, and Blaine Alexander did a great job. Tanya Miller and Asha Rangappa, thank you both for uh, sharing your expertise tonight. That was very illuminating for me.